Hey Aquarius, welcome to your end of February 2022. Oops, I said 22, 23. Tarot update, it's Raina here. Oh, getting all these major arcana. They're all major arcana cards. Are you kidding me? Okay. Alrighty then. So we still have a few more days of Aquarius season for the sun being in your sign as I record this on the 15th of February. The heart of the matter is the emperor and this can be a male. Uh, sometimes it can be a father, other authority figure. I guess you could say a boss. Somebody who is very especially a male who is very black and white in their views on life. This is right. That is wrong. So this type of person probably would not, would clash with the typical Aquarius individual if you're dealing with such a person. So you might be having conflict with them, power struggles, what have you. Uh, if this is your partner, for instance, this is, is associated with the sign of Aries. I associate it with Capricorn, um, but they're both cardinal signs, I guess. So maybe it doesn't matter. But if this is um, an influence within yourself, then it could be that you're getting your life together. You see the four, this is, uh, it's actually the fifth card, but it's numbered four, is the card of... Um, Saturn and foundations. So some Aquarians may be feeling like, okay, it's time to get down to brass tacks and, you know, I've had my fun. Now I'm going to do da, 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 da. Now you have actually had Saturn in your sign and Saturn is poised to go into Pisces on the 7th of, of uh, March. So Maybe this is kind of like that last minute um, kind of lesson from, from Saturn that is getting your butt in order for some reason. And we look at the past position that might be influencing this and we have the Hierophant. And um, so it's possible that this has some kind of spiritual connection that perhaps you've been doing something that has led to a spiritual awakening of sorts. Um, and that has positively impacted your life in general. This could be a card that is associated with marriage, something traditional. So, you know, maybe you married the emperor <laughs> and now you found out he's the emperor and you're like, can I have my money back? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. Well, actually you did. You might not have thought you did, but you did. The higher message, the spiritual message, the bigger picture is the tower. Something has to give. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, we have been having... I always associate the tower with the um, the eclipses that, and they have been in fixed signs like year, years. They've been in Taurus and Scorpio, and so they have fallen in your fourth and tenth houses, the house of home and family, and the house of career. And um, so that those areas might have been experiencing some kind of a shakeup, but. They also can deal with the, at least the fourth house can deal with the past, which can formulate some of the ideas that people have about life and about what, what they should be 
dealing with, whether it's in relationships, um, there, I mean, I'm talking about with a, a spouse or with their parents. Um, like I said, the emperor can be that authoritarian parent. And maybe that is something that you always um, rebelled against. But not all Aquarians are going to be like that, believe it or not. Um, or, or at least I, I've never understood why people marry their parents, uh, especially if they had problems with their parent, why they would marry somebody who's like that. But I think that the reason that that happens sometimes is that on a deeper level, they're trying to work something out. They're trying to um, change, you know, flip the script, so to speak. And I can't say that that's always bad, but it does seem like it's misguided <laughs> uh, because of what the outcome is likely to be. But in any case, yeah, something along those lines may be really... Um, influencing you where you feel like you have to that something has to give you can't keep um staying in this situation with somebody calling the shots you feel like it's just a matter of time before the gasket kind of explodes and really, um, the tower is about relieving pressure, like if it's a pressure cooker situation. For instance, if this is like the emperor's your boss, it might remind you of your father if you had like a very um, authoritarian father and you have this boss that's like that and you're like, I can't take this one more day, but you're doing it for whatever reason. The tower card is like, you know, whether you do it, if, even if you decide not to quit your job, something could happen that will force your hand in that sense. And it could be very messy. You could like take action yourself to make something happen and then you'll have more control of, over the outcome. And people sometimes don't do that because even if they don't like the situation they're in, it feels familiar. So it's just reminding you that um, there might be like a pressure cooker situation happening. What challenges you is the judgment card. And this can be many things. For instance, um, I was saying, you know, not all Aquarians are totally rebellious. In other words, that they would never be with somebody or never work for somebody that is really like an authoritarian but the truth is that some of you have sun and aquarius people have um moon and a water sign um especially like if it's pisces or or cancer maybe you're very security minded or or capricorn there's just certain taurus if you have if you have your venus in um, or, you know, any inner planet in Pisces, you might have a, a greater tolerance for that kind of treatment or situation. And yet the sun sign has to be honored above all else, in my opinion, because that's what we came here to be. And that's kind of the center of your existence in, in a way. And so if you're, you know, the judgment card is really talking about this idea of judgment. Do you, do you exercise good judgment? Are you kind of deluded sometimes? You kind of like minimize your problems, your situations where you're not in a harmonious environment. So it can speak to your actual judgment. It could speak to, um, you know, this is a card of rebirth and something's blocking it. Maybe, you know, there's a person in your life that isn't really, um, they, they don't really have your back in terms of what you're trying to do to better yourself. And if that's the case, because they want to keep you under their thumb or 
the way that you are and you want to grow, you want that kind of expansion, um, then you have to realize that that person is not necessarily um, supportive. What is coming in is represented by the Ace of Cups. It's interesting. She's holding this, I guess it's like a bowl or something, but it's in her heart chakra. This is a card of new love coming into your life. Um, oh, what this, the, the challenge for this, this could be like, yeah, this could be the judge and this could be like, there's a delay if you're getting a divorce, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, because the higher fact could be marriage. So that could be what is happening that you're waiting for a divorce and something. And, you know, um, there's, you know, your fifth house has been really occupied with um, Mars in, in, um, in Gemini uh, and there was a retrograde for seven months in March. So when, when Mars changes signs on March 25th, it could be that that's when things start to pick up for you. And it leaves that area of the fifth house, the area that can be about love and it goes somewhere, it goes into a more practical area. So just keep in mind that these in a couple of months, you may see more movement too. So a uh, new love could be coming into your life, a new uh, type of work that is more um, heart-based. So healing types of works and things like that. The outcome is the eight of wands. Um, I think that this is simply pointing out that, and it could be like that Mars energy that is still not out of its shadow until mid-March. And so maybe that is when you'll totally see more movement um, is that you're still in this process. Oh, I, you know what I think too? I think Saturn leaving, uh, your sign. So maybe starting after that first week in March, see if things start to pick up for you because the eight of wands upright is, you know, all these things happening at once. So you're still, you might still be in a little bit of a holding pattern as we end the month of February, but I think things will definitely pick up for the everybody, for the collective in March. Okay, that's what I have for you, Aquarius. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.